Good day and welcome to King William Rules Everything. Uh, today I'm going to kind of go over a neat little project we've been working on. Um, we got a Raspberry Pi 3 and we put RetroPie on it. Um, we're not going to do any kind of videos on how to install RetroPie or unbox a, a Raspberry Pi. There's thousands of them out there. Um, so, but kind of I'll show you kind of like a completed version or a fairly complete version of RetroPie and uh, we'll take a look at it now. <coughs> Uh, I've hooked up uh, Xbox 360 wireless con or wired controller. Um, I got some wireless ones, but I like the little wired one. It's free. So, and also I got a couple of other uh, controllers, a little Super Nintendo one, which I haven't configured yet. But I think that'll be kind of fun because it kind of uses pretty close to what uh, the original controller is. But uh, here's the uh, retro uh, the uh, Raspberry Pi 3. Not much to it. It's just a little dinky board, and uh, for what it is, it's um, you know pretty powerful. Um, so RetroPie is kind of neat because what you, you can do is you can um, <coughs> install different kinds of uh, uh, emulators. So the, the, the original Nintendo is really popular now because they came out with the Nintendo NES Classic which has like 30 games. And um, so you can kind of see we have like 2,000 games. So uh, the uh, NES Classic I think it was like $50, $60 and you can get this whole kit, um, the, the Raspberry Pi. Um, uh, SD card, little heat sinks and case, and HDMI cable for about the same price, maybe just a little bit more. But you have to put a little work into it. But at the end, you're going to get something that's way way better than that than the um, the uh, NES <coughs> Classic. So uh, just a couple of the emulators we put on here. We put uh, NES, uh, Nintendo 64, which uh, that one kind of games are so-so. Uh, the ones I've played so far, um, some are kind of sluggish. So I'm not really worried about those. Uh, the Sega uh, Genesis that works really well. Uh, Mame, <coughs> which is uh, like the classic um, arcade systems uh, like Street Fighters, uh, Pac-Man, um, Galaga, all that, all that kind of stuff. Even the modern stuff, the King of Fighters, all those. Uh, those work pretty well. Uh, Game Boy Advanced. Um, I'm not sure I want to play that in, on HD TV. It's really kind of uh, uh, designed for a low res screen, but you can play it if you want. Uh, ColecoVision, uh, I like ColecoVision. Um, this works really well. Um, so if you're a ColecoVision fan, this is the way to roll. Uh, Atari 7800, if, uh, a lot of games for that. Uh, Atari 5200, um, these all work really well. Atari 2600, um, it's a nice way to kind of relive your childhood. These games are really fun, um, <clears throat> and you can't really beat it for the price. It's, uh, downloading ROMs is illegal, so unless you really own the ROMs, you're not allowed to really play them. Uh, Amiga, which is kind of fun, especially if you like the Commodore Amiga, you can do it to RSTs. Uh, so you can kind of customize this to kind of kind of any way you want to. Uh, just depends on how much time and how much storage you have on your SD card. I put a 32 gig SD card in here, and I don't even know how much space is left, but you can put a ton of ROMs. The ROMs, most of them like Atari 2600s. Uh, the older systems like you know kilobytes, so you can get a lot. Uh, start putting like Neo Geo stuff, that kind of thing. You're looking at some some uh, bigger ROMs, so your space will go pretty quick. But uh, if you're going to do that, I definitely would get a 32 gig SD card. Uh, that's basically, I think, the the largest that this guy will support. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll just launch one really quick so you can kind of get an idea. They did a really nice job on this interface. <clears throat> um, the only thing is, kind of, when you get to certain points, you can kind of realize what it really is. It's kind of a um, uh, Linux, so it goes back to uh, text space um, uh, interface but we'll just launch a, a game uh, they, there's a little option on here called scraper and what it'll do instead of just having um, oops uh, just the names of the uh, the titles it'll put in I think I'm clicking too fast here Instead of just uh, saying the names, it, it downloads a little picture of the box art, so that kind of makes it nice. So, because a lot of times you'll see these games, it's like they're ten times in there. So, what's you know which ones which? But at least with the art box art, you kind of go, oh, I know what that is. You can kind of see here's where um, you start to see what the, the, the interface is pretty good, but you know they have some like little parts where you can see some text. But other than that, it works really well. Uh, sound emulated really well. Uh, the games really well. Um, 
so you kind of see it's, you know. Uh, I also have a, a, a Retron 5, which we'll probably do a little um, a review on that. That's been out for a couple of years, and that does a really nice job. But you actually need the, the original cartridges to play that. And, and that guy actually has, it, it does uh, Famicom, Super Nintendo, Genesis, uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and I think there's uh, there's one other one. But um, that's kind of a, a nice system, but it's designed to actually insert the cartridge. And what's nice about that, uh, instead of just using kind of like a, uh, any kind of controller, you can you can use the original controllers. So you can go on eBay, or if you have some old controllers like Super, uh, Genesis or uh, Super Nintendo, you can plug them right in. You can use any game with any controller. Um, and there, there's actually ways you can uh, you can dump ROMs on there. So, but I think half of the fun of it is it's sticking that cartridge in, blowing out the contacts, cleaning them, putting them back in. Um, so especially if you have a, a large collection and you have a, a Nintendo or a Super Nintendo <coughs> that you can no longer hook up to a TV, that outputs only HDMI. Same with this, the, the Raspberry Pi. This only outputs H HDMI, so you need a, you need a modern TV. But uh, so that's basically it for the the uh, Retro Pi. Uh, highly recommend it, especially like uh, like tinkering and playing around. It did take me quite a little while to configure it and get it the way I like it, but uh, it's it's worth the effort. And you really can't beat the price. The Retro Pi is free. Uh, Raspberry Pi is like maybe sixty, seventy. You can go up to maybe hundred bucks for the whole. You want a fancy case and stuff like that. Uh, but you know you're looking at how much. Uh, time you're going to spend playing the game, you know, you, you easily recoup your uh, time, um, especially if, you know, like, say you go golfing, you know, you're going to spend maybe 30, 40 bucks on a game of golf, well, you know, that's four hours, you're going to get, you know, especially many, many hours uh, gameplay, especially if you're a, a gamer that really liked the older games, and this is really the way to go, and it's a nice little, like, winter project, so, um, until next time, carry on.